Pokemon Go, an app that has caused a craze the world has never seen. As of this recording, the smart device application has been downloaded by over 15 million trainers, myself included. However, the game that has caused 15 million people to do within a week what Michelle Obama has tried and failed to do over the past 8 years is not without its glitches. Now, if you are watching this, most of what I am about to cover is no recent news, but this is mainly my review after playing for a week. The game has been out since Wednesday, July 6th. I was able to create my account that night and log in for a brief time to create my character. But, due to the massive amount of people attempting to log in at that same time and the idiotically low amount of server handleage, I was not able to log on until Saturday, hence why this is my week out review even though the game has been out for over a week. For those of you who do not know, Pokemon Go was developed by Niantic, which is affiliated with Google in some way. Now, Niantic had developed a game previously to this, which had used augmented reality as well, known as Ingress, in which people went around and placed points of interest and had something to do with getting more somethings or whatever for their teams. What they did was take those points of interest, added a Pokemon theme, and turned said points into gyms and Pokestops. Now, before I continue, I actually wonder what was going through the minds of those who work at Niantic. Oh hey, let's launch this Pokemon app that allows people to catch Pokemon in real life via augmented reality. Oh, great idea, Bill. How many servers do you think we need? One. One thousand? No, one. One hundred? No, John, just one. Uno, singular. But Bill, it's Pokemon. This has been a global phenomenon for over a decade. Well, it requires gamers to not only get up and dust pizza crumbs off their boxers, but also to go outside, walk around, and even risk the possibility of meeting others without using Xbox Live. Good point. This might become a flop anyway. Let's make our one server run at half capacity. We don't want to waste electricity after all. Fifteen million downloads later, they came to the realization that perhaps gamers aren't the fat lazy losers the internet had made them out to be. Now, since then, there was this whole scare about how Niantic can and has obtained any and all personal information from their users if they use their Google accounts. And they released update 1.0.1 the next day, which was supposed to do the following. Trainers do not have to enter their username and password repeatedly after a forced logout. Added stability to Pokemon Trainer Club account login process. Resolved issues causing crashes. Fixed Google account scope. However, all it really did was lock out millions of players from experiencing the game, myself included. Strangely, all the players who were locked out were those using the Pokemon Trainer Club accounts to log in instead of the Google one. Hmm, my conspiracy senses are tingling. Anyway, that was more or less resolved after a day or so with update 1.0.2. Now, as for my own experience with this, I have spent just as much time, if not more, experiencing the game crashing, closing itself out, unable to log me in, freezing during gameplay, the dreaded unmoving Pokeball of Doom, and about half the times I've leveled up, I've gotten no items. Level 16 and 17 alone, I got nothing. I've been scrounging for Pokeballs for days, and with me living in a suburban area, there are a grand total of three Pokestops and two gyms in my area, which spans about two miles. At least Jorba Regional Park, which is a big park by the way, has 8 stops and several Pokemon gyms, but Tri-City, which is a park barely a quarter the size, has just as much if not more. Now, I know that's not the fault of Niantic, but more of the people, or lack thereof, who used Ingress in my neck of the woods. But come on, you think a little preparation for something as big as this would have them scanning the entire world and making sure everyone who would potentially become a trainer would have adequate resources to maintain playability just in case bugs happen? Also, I'd like to note, for a game that is so obviously still in its alpha stage, to put in in-app purchases that people spend real money to buy things and use them in-game only to have the game crash on them and the item expires well before they can log back in is the epitome of greed and hubris. In closing, I enjoy the game when I can play it. But in my personal opinion, as of now, Pokemon Go is nothing more than a glorified, overhyped Pokemon themed exercise app with cute check in stations. Having said all that, I'm hooked like a magic carp on an old rod. Fix this now, please. I got that nerd rage.